What's going on, Player Profiler Nation? Welcome to the latest episode of The Trade Gods. I'm your host, Matty Kiwum, and I am joined by my fellow Trade God brethren, the morning man, Jason Allwine. What's going on, Jay? Dude, having a great day, sitting on cloud nine. As we'll talk about a little bit later, a wonderful trade hit my inbox that may or may not be the trade of the week and may or not involve you two. So I'm very excited to break that down later. Super, super pumped about it. Also, last week we finished up the rookie guide, so I'm kind of still riding the high of getting that big project completed. So make sure you go check out the rookie guide at playerprofiler.com slash rookie dash guide. Great, great content in that so really just feeling great man happy to be back for trade gods and happy to have our wonderful guest tyler canabley who's out there in the best ball streets doing live drafts every single night on his own channel and is the newest member of the trade gods invitational league tyler welcome to the show i'm happy to be on the show happy to be in the league i've 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 you, you we mentioned it before but i've my trades have been a staple of the show the past couple of weeks that's correct so that is correct I, I, yeah. three for three uh, it's, it's going to be again on this week uh, or uh, later in the show. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to break it all down. Hopefully people are uh, putting some respect on my name and my dynasty trait, my dynasty uh, prowess, you could say. The prowess is in full effect. And again, we are highlighting another one of your trades today on our TGIF trade of the week. So you're three for three batting 1000. And if it felt like our intro was good, like really good, like we had done it before today, you might be right. But anyway, <laughs> today's episode is about running backs. Not only just running back, but running backs that you should be buying in Dynasty. Something, 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 sex joke. Let's get this thing started. You're listening to The Trade Gods. Oh, my God. I'm batting a thousand. I clicked the wrong button there, but we're riding with it anyway, baby. Let's go. Jason, you are the morning man. You are my fellow trade guy, brother, and you get the first crack at the running back targets that you are buying right now. Yeah, and I know we're all supposed to have three running back buys, but last week we had top 10 wide receivers, so I figured let's make it top 10 running backs, and I'm going with a duo. I think you can find some value with the Washington Commanders backfield. I think you could go get Brian Robinson at the RB28 price tag and Austin Eckler at the RB40 price tag and feel pretty good about your budget RB room. Last year, Brian Robinson had over 200 touches and finished as the RB21 overall. And Austin Eckler last year also had over 200 touches and finished as the RB26 overall, despite missing three games. So both of them already last year finished better than their current price tag. And when you look at how this new commander's backfield might shake up, You look at Cliff Kingsbury's best season in Arizona. In 2021, they made the playoffs. And in 2021, they had a backfield duo with the names James Conner and Chase Edmonds, who both finished top 24 in points per game. And James Conner finished as a top five running back by the end of the season, scoring 18 total touchdowns. And Chase Edmonds had 100 plus carries, 600 rush yards, and over 40 receptions for 300 receiving yards. Both of those running backs had really successful seasons. I think we could see a lot of the same in Washington next season. And also the other new coaching hire for the Washington Commanders, Dan Quinn, his best season head coaching the Falcons was with Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman. So I just see a really good potential for a nice backfield duo here. And I think with a rookie quarterback also, they're going to have to rely on the run game a decent bit. And so with a good Bell cow running back like Brian Robinson. He proved it last year. He can handle the volume. And with a good satellite back like Austin Eckler, I think there's some real vo- value there. So, so I'm going to go get those guys and kind of just own that backfield for, for a really cheap price. Jason, I am going to thank you for improving our SEO now that we can make this the top 10 running back buys in Dynasty. So you are the man for that, Tyler. Who is your first candidate that Dynasty managers need to be buying? This running back was a guy I loved coming in. It was a rookie last year. Loved him coming in. Loved his film. Loved his profile. Kendra Miller, when mm-hmm. got uh, top of the third round draft capital to the Saints in the real NFL draft, I believe he was the 308 overall in the NFL draft and didn't get that much of an opportunity last year. Had an injury that sidelined him in camp and to start the season. Didn't get that much run, but... I'm still w- willing to bet on the profile coming out of college that was Kendra Miller 
the third round draft capital was good draft capital. So I'm I'm ecstatic about that fact. The two games he got last year where you could kind of maybe project something toward the future is uh, he had 12 plus carries in two games. The two games, one of those games, he had 90 total yards, good yardage. And then the other one, he had 79 total total yards and a touchdown. I don't, and I believe it was like 12 carries and 13 carry games. So it's not like he ever even got like a, a nice like 15 right. plus or 18 plus carry game. I think there's some real upside with him. You know, just coming in as a rookie, maybe not having to go your way. He is still technically behind Alvin Kamara, Kamara which you don't love. But, you know, we've, we've seen Kamara be kind of a, a platoon, not a platoon back, but a guy who's going to split the backfield with somebody, you know, like Mark Ingram or uh, not Jamal Williams last year. But, you know, some other guys like that. Uh, Latavius Murray, that's the other name I was thinking of. But I could, we could see something similar to that uh, this year. Uh, Taysom Hill stealing goal line touches obviously still doesn't probably feel as good. But Kendra Miller going forward in Dynasty, like, if I doubt Kamara is on the team next year, I don't think he's going to finish his career as a Saint, especially with that contract that he's on. I feel like he could be a cut candidate next year. So if you're looking to the future a little bit more, Kendrick Miller is a guy I love. He's currently the RB31 on key trade cut. Uh, that that price is actually a little, a little higher than I thought. I feel like the, the actual consensus around Kendrick is a little lower. I feel like I don't hear anything about Kendrick Miller. I don't see anything in the news on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, anything about Kendrick. So Kendrick Miller, a guy you, I think you could take advantage of considering – He's not being talked about that much. It's it's definitely a guy I want on my dynasty team. If you're a little unfamiliar with Kendra, go look at his final year at TCU. The kid was a mega producer as a, as a TCU running back. Uh, my first buy candidate of the day is Najee Harris. Uh, right now he's running back 21 on Keep Trade Cup, but he's running back 11 in my dynasty rankings. He has never had a season in the NFL in which he did not rush for over 1,000 yards, a season in which he did not rush for at least eight touchdowns. Um, last year, uh, Jalen Warren made his presence known. Absolutely. Even with that presence being known, Najee Harris was sixth in carries, eighth in red zone touches, and he was still elusive. You know, we, the year prior, he was dealing with a foot injury. This year, seemed fully healthy. Twelfth in evaded tackles, fourth in the amongst the qualified running backs um, and breakaway runs. And now he has Arthur Smith coming in as his offensive coordinator. Arthur Smith was the offensive coordinator of the Titans when Derrick Henry was one of the best fantasy producers at the position. I think Arthur Smith comes in, and they're going to have to go conservative offense just based on personnel. A lot of Najee Harris touches, a lot of Najee Harris red zone touches, and I think we see more production again from a guy that's had now um, two top 20 seasons and a top seven season as a points-per-game scorer in the NFL. So to get him at a price of RB21 – I am all for it. I got him, like I said, at 11. I put him more closely to the A-Chains and the Josh Jacobs than most, and I think that of those names, he's going to come at the cheapest price. So I think opportunity meets production here for Najee, so I am buying. And I think, to be honest, not buying Najee Harris is a mistake. It's it's like not hitting the record button at the beginning of your first time uh, type of level mistake. I'm going to go on record saying that. Jason, who's your second buy candidate that everyone needs to be buying? Let's go with uh, the Houston Texan. Not many people are talking about post Diggs trade. Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon has done nothing in his career but produce. And I know he kind of has the stink about his name now because of his age and kind of lost a little bit of ceiling last year in Cincinnati. But over the last few years, he's still averaged 15 or more points per game. He's had 35 touchdowns over the last three seasons combined. He's a good pass catcher. He's a good runner. I mean, really does everything you want. And RB32 on player profiler right now, all the way up to RB20 on keep trade cut. But I think that that's really not too bad of a price to pay, especially if you're a win now type team. I think that he's going to get a ton of dump offs from CJ Stroud. He's probably going to score a lot of fantasy points, probably get you over 15 fantasy points a game, you know, provided he stays healthy because, I mean, they're going to be passing the ball a ton. They're going to be scoring a ton. This is an electric offense. He has all the skill sets you want in a running back, and they just paid him a pretty decent contract as well. So I, I'm going to buy Joe Mixon while I can, and maybe even take some of those other like older win now running backs that have gone ahead of him in rankings, like a Derrick Henry, and seeing if I could get like a Joe Mixon plus. I think that that would be really really fun. So what what Devin Singletary did last year was absolutely uh, exactly. exciting for in this role. So Mixon, you got to give him a little bit of credit there. Love that call, Tyler. What's your second running back that everyone needs to be buying? I feel really strongly about this one. Tajay Spears right now getting I saw like I said, I do I do my drafts every night on underdog. Underdog, I know it's a completely different concept, but I get like 
so much hate for Love and Tajay Spears. Like, oh, all I hear is Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard. Do we recognize the fact that Tajay Spears, like, took away legitimate targets, carries, receptions away from Derrick Henry last year as a rookie? Like, it's a, it was a real thing. He outsnapped Derrick Henry in multiple games. Yes, you can argue it's game script. Derrick Henry's not as good of a pass-catching running back as a lot of other running backs in the league, especially not Tajay Spears. Like, I get that fact, but... You know, like we we've, we've seen other guys with Derrick Henry in like you know like oh like remember like Jeremy McNichols was supposed to be like a guy at one point in time. Uh, we had Dion Lewis was supposed to be like the starter over Derrick Henry. Like Derrick Henry's kept a lot of guys off the field. Not last year. Last year, Tajay Spears was legitimately involved on a bad team, so you didn't see as many of those good fancy performances. But the Titans, they're rehauling this offense. It's 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 officially Will Levis season. They got Ridley. They got Hopkins. They signed some guards in free agency. I'd be shocked if they didn't draft a tackle in the draft. Like Everything's shaping up for this offense to be pretty good. They get a new play call. This is not going to be the old Titans offense ground and pound around Derrick Henry. This is going to be more of a Bengals offense. You know, Get Brian Callahan, the OC from – Cincinnati coming over to Tennessee like that it's going to be a completely different look down in Tennessee and I think Tajay Spears is going to be the beneficiary of that it, today the OC coming out it's going to be this is a quote one a and one b between Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard that's all I need to hear like I think Spears and Pollard should be going a lot similar in like uh redraft specifically now does in terms of a long-term value for Spears and Dynasty does he have an ACL that's neither true nor that I guess we don't know the full the full uh, effect <laughs> on that, but hey, for, for I, the next for the next couple of years, I'm I'm all in on Tajay Spears. You know, Heinz Ward didn't have ACLs, so he had a pretty good career. <laughs> yeah, th- this offense, this offense of the Titans is going to look totally different. They're a run first to establish the pass, and, and now they're going to be a pass first to allow for the run to th- flourish. Uh, whether you're a Paul guy, whether you're a Spears guy, uh, I would imagine it's going to be pretty good for the Titans. So Spears, yeah, go so. ahead and get him. Uh, my number two buy candidate of the day, if you watch the trade gods, you already know it's coming a mile away, Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson right now, running back 48 on keep trade cut. I am at running back 30. This I am just utterly sick and tired of this guy's misusage and disrespect by an NFL franchise, and I'm hoping my hometown Patriots can do something about it. 439 speed, 99th percentile speed score, six foot 228 pounds. Even last year, a year which he wasn't necessarily a world beater, eight points per game, mm-hmm. this guy was still sixth amongst all qualified running backs at fantasy points per opportunity. This is the type of difference he can make. Fourth in yards per touch, second in yards created per touch. This guy is a creator. The Patriots brought him in in the thick of where all these running backs are coming off the board. That tells me that they pursued and landed their guy. And all the other Ramondre Stevenson fans out there might hate this. Ramondre Steven is not nearly as good as Antonio Gibson is in terms of athleticism, in terms of pass catching ability. They're not even close. Yes, I know Ramondre Stevenson had a 67 or 69 yard or a nice reception season. I watched every game there. There was games where he'd have two targets and then have seven dump offs for 14 yards at the end of a half or at the end of a game. It was not quality pass catching work. And you bring in a guy like this, and you look at this offense, it sucks, but we love volume for running backs. And some people might not want to hear this. Up in my neck of the woods, New England, Antonio Gibson is the most talented offensive player that is on this roster. So I, I'm trying to buy before before the, the price comes up. Clip it and ship it. <laughs> send that <laughs> bitch. And also send me all the Antonio Gibson that you can take. We still have a couple more by candidates at the running back position. But before we get into that, let's run this week's ad. Hey, why do we partner with the FFPC? Because they have the widest variety of fantasy football formats. And it's the easiest place to find all types of fantasy football contests in the world. What if you want to play for high stakes? Well, they have a $6 million prize pool with their Fantasy Players Championship. They also have way-too-early best ball leagues that start in February and Dynasty Leagues. They have the closest thing to a liquid market for orphans that there is in all of Dynasty. And the FFPC has sponsored us for half a decade because we are actually delivering information that can help fantasy gamers and they're generating so much interest into bringing in so many new users, casual users even, the FFPC creates 
a unique experience where you can both compete against the best and make money. Use promo code UNDERWORLD to get $25 off your first team. $25 off your first team at the FFPC with promo code UNDERWORLD. Go get it! The trade gods, Jason Alwine, Matty Kuhn, joined by the great Tyler Canabley. We each have one more running back before we get into the trade league. Jason, what is your third and final, or say your fourth and final, running back by candidate? Yeah. Uh, the dog himself, canine, Kenneth Walker. Uh, oh. Right now, <laughs> I love him. I love him. I think he's genuinely one of the purest running backs in the league. A, a bell cow, a running back. Like when you picture a running back, you pin, you picture Kenneth Walker. Just a total stud. All the workout metrics in the world. The profile of just an amazing running back. I, I can go on and on about that. And. I just think that with this new regime coming into Seattle, uh, I think that they're going to look at Kenneth Walker. I think they're going to look at Zach Charbonnet and they're going to notice the two different types of athletes they have. And they're going to give the ball to Kenneth Walker more often than not. And that's also what we saw last year. Like Zach Charbonnet didn't have more than 10 touches in any game that Kenneth Walker played. And Kenneth Walker was extremely successful last season in games that Zach Charbonnet played in them too. Kenneth Walker's also seen 20 or more touches 11 times in his career. In in those 11 games, he's averaged 125 yards, a touchdown, and 20 points per game in those 11 games. That's just showing how good of a running back he can be as a bell cow. I think bringing in a defensive coordinator to be the new head coach signifies that they might lean on the running game a little bit. Uh, and even if they don't, I think that there's a potential that, you know, bringing in the University of Washington's offensive coordinator and maybe bringing in Michael Penix or something that would unlock the pass game, which also just unlocks the running game as well. So I, either way, I just think Kenneth Walker is primed to be a bell cow right now and sitting outside the RB12 and a lot of rankings. I think that there's some value to be had. We're not even that far removed from him literally being the RB1 in Dynasty and not much has even changed from that time. Like just a dog. Great running back, gonna get a ton of volume next year, gonna score a ton of points, and I'm excited to get him out of value right now. Real quick, just want to ask you this, Tyler. You're in the you're in the, you know, the underdog best ball streets. What's kind of the market consensus on Zach Charbonnet in those? In those, because usually those best ball early drafts are a good precursor for how we can expect draft seasons to come along. So, how's Zach Charbonnet looking in those best balls? Yeah, Charbonnet is like one of those. Uh, there's kind of the tiers. You got like the stars, the starters. And like the 50 50 guys, and then you kind of have like the backup, like the handcuff backups. And Charbonnet yeah. is kind of like one of those high tier uh handcuff backups. Okay. I haven't pulled up right in front of me, I can double check the ranking um to see. So, right now, Charbonnet is currently RB41 ADP of 134 overall. So, he's like he you can get him as like your fourth running back, uh, or fifth running back if you're if you're a big running back drafter, but you can get him pretty easily. Yeah. In underdog, like you could have as much exposure to Charbonnet as you want, to be honest. Okay, so I would say the market's telling us that they also agree with Jason saying he's the backup. He's not a split carry type guy. This is KW's backfield. The dog. Nine. Call Jason K nine. The dog. Love it. Tyler, what's your last, your third, final buy at the running back position? Well, you guys are talking dogs about Kenneth Walker. I'm talking about a cat, a jaguar, in fact, Travis Etienne. <laughs> I don't understand how this guy is where he is. He's currently the RB8 on keep trade cut. He's about the same thing on underdog too. And this guy, like people forget, was the RB3 last year in uh, half point PPR scoring. And it was like, a, it was a tale of two seasons, tale of two halves of a season, I should say, for ETN. Weeks one through eight, he was the RB2. He was number three in total touchdowns, number five in targets, number seven in receptions, and number one in total touches. He had 18 plus carries in six of those first eight games, right? And he was like, he was on fire. He looked unbelievable at the start of the season. Yeah. Then disaster struck. Something happened. I don't know what, I think it was an injury. I remember there was a game where he came out, looked like he had a serious injury, but he, then he went back in. I, I'm convinced it was an injury because you look at like the Jaguars, weeks one through eight, I think they were like six, they were six and two going into the bye week, six and two, and they were riding the coattails of ETN. Then in weeks nine through 17, ETN was the RB23. Scored just four touchdowns, had 18 plus carries in just one of his eight games. And then he saw his total touches decrease from 178 over the first eight weeks to 126 
over the last eight weeks. And most imp- more importantly, what I think, the Jaguars finished three and six to end the season. So there's kind of a correlation between getting ETN the ball and winning games and not getting ETN the ball in losing games. So th- for that reason alone, like th- there's the rumors of Tank Bigsby, you know, like I think at the, was it at the combine or the, uh, maybe a pro day or something, a coach was like, I was like, I really want Tank Bigsby more involved. And like, oh my God, it's Tank Bigsby season, everyone. Travis ETN down the drain. Like yeah. it, it, Tank, the more, I would even argue, the more carries Tank Bixby gets, like those inside the tackles carries, like those I, I call them Zeke yards because it was like that one year with Zeke and Tony Pollard. Like if he yeah. wants to get those Zeke, those just ram into the A gap yards, leave ETN to be more the Pollard role. You know, give him the high value touches, give him the explosive touches where you're scheming something specifically rather than just calling halfback dive for for ETN five times a game. So if ET if Bixby's gonna keep etn more fresh and and everything like that then i'm in on etn i mean on etn either way but the the, the tank bigsby part of this does not scare me etn is a my biggest buy in any format tank bigsby should not be uh a problem because he couldn't even fight off who is it uh who's the uh, the Dearness guy Dearness johnson. Dearness johnson so if you can't beat Dearness johnson out on the depth chart you sure shit ain't beating out travis etn who I have in my top 10, I am at running back seven. Love him in Dynasty. And I had Alan Seslowski on the game plan last week, weekend, and we talked about the importance of first-round running backs and the installation and the value it provides. And when I look at my top nine running backs on my Dynasty running back board, six of them have running have first-round capital. The other three, second-round draft capital. DC is paramount when it comes to evaluating running backs over the course of multiple seasons, anything outside of first or second, you might as well just be an assassination hitman one year at a time type of mentality when it comes to position. So I love the Travis Etienne call. And I think he is being moved in some leagues. We actually saw him moved in the league. I'm putting a you Jason. I don't you. like the <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, we don't love every trade that we make. Uh, the last buy candidate before we get into TGIF trade of the week is Alvin Kamara. And I don't bring up Alvin Kamara because I don't like Kendra Miller. I do like Kendra Miller, but I think that what is unique about Alvin Kamara is he can be successful in a number of different outcomes given the price tag. He's running back 25 on keep trade cut. He has, he's over the age apex. He's going to go for late seconds, maybe a third in a, in a prospect type of guy, but I still have him inside my top 20. I got him at running back 19. So I'm looking to buy. And I think that he might get moved. And if he gets moved, He's where's he gonna go? He's gonna go to a team that wants to use Alvin Kamara to have Alvin Kamara, and he's still a pass catching demon. Last year, fourth in yards per out run, fifth in catch rate, seventh in route participation rate, just an absolute menace on the passing side of the field. And if he stays home, and Kendra Miller gets more of, and I'm not gonna call him Zeke touches because I think he's more explosive than that, but let's say he gets more of those first and second down touches. Well. Last year, what we saw uh, out of uh, tra- uh, Alvin Kamara was second on the in running backs in, in targets, 87 targets, and despite being 29th in carries, ninth in red zone touches. So maybe he's off the field in the meat of the, the, the field and Kendra Miller is able to thrive in those spots. He's still going to come on when the Saints are trying to score the football. He's still going to come on when they need to pass the ball, and Derek Carr isn't going anywhere. So Alvin Kamara is one of those vets that if I'm looking to win now, and I fancy my 24 team a contender. Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw a couple fun coupons at the vet and try to get myself a, a running back because he's also the type of guy, unfortunately, that if weeks one through three is averaging 16 fantasy points a game and he looks like Alvin Kamara, that price is going to go back up to his vintage price. <laughs> and it's just it's just a pain in the ass to buy. So sometimes with these veteran guys, uh, and we've all kind of expressed that with some of our picks today, uh, the importance of kind of capitalizing and bringing in a vet when the price is right. So that is it. 10 running back by candidates, but we're not done before we let everyone go tonight. We have another T G I F trade of the week, of course, featuring the trade of the week King himself, Mr. Batting a thousand Tyler Knavely. So let's jump in to that one. Boom, boys! It's a little menage to we get a three-way trade that involved all of us. And what's even more, this is why you tune in the Trade Gods, because we about them streets. We about this content. We made this trade about two hours before recording. 
Uh, so we were ready to rock and roll, make a content trade that we all can walk away from pretty happily. Um, what Instead of picking a winner because all of us are just pick ourselves, I think, why don't we go down the board and explain why we were okay with giving this up and why we were okay hitting the accept button. So, Tyler, we'll start with you. Why were you okay giving away the 108 to get Jared Goff? Well, first, I was almost the one that kind of put a, a damper in this trade. You two have both accepted it. And I was on the fence just <laughs> looking at – I'll let Jason talk about what he's getting in return. But DK for Najee, I thought straight up was a really good trade for him. And I wanted to maybe make it not as good of a trade for him because I was jealous. <laughs> but if we're looking at my, my perspective, uh, I needed a second quarterback. I had Justin Herbert. And after that, I think it's like Tannehill, Zach Wilson. So I had the 102 – and I had the 108. So I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll, I'll figure out quarterback somewhere in the rookie draft. But I also have some win now pieces. So I was kind of worried. But, I, you know, I, I, I was telling myself I'd figure it all out. But then Jared Goff comes across uh, across my way. And I'm like, you know what? I need a quarterback anyway. Then I can just draft the best player available at 102. Don't have to really worry about uh, that positional value getting a quarterback. I can still go quarterback. I'm not going to put my cards on the table. It's smokescreen season in this in this league too. So <laughs> I can't exactly say who I, I'm going to draft, but I did need a quarterback, and Goff uh, certainly, certainly helps that uh, helps that trade for me. And I have Laporta, so a nice little lion stack, treating, the, treating this like it's, uh, like it's underdog. We're stacking. <laughs> so in this trade, you got Jared Goff. Now let's move on to Jason. You in this trade have seemingly been the clear winner amongst uh, the league chat. And now Tyler is kind of saying that you may have won this trade. So you gave away Najee and got DK. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, you know, I, I it's it, cross position trades are difficult. I, I think, you know, DK Metcalf, obviously a stud. They're about the same age, but a wide receiver that means a little bit more. So, you know, in terms of dynasty value, I think I win it. But I mean, like, I, I, I do think that, I mean, you laid out the 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 the, the reasoning for buying Najee Harris. I, I I traded for Najee Harris. I gave up a 26 first to get him this offseason after the move. So I clearly believe in him, too. So it it did sting moving on from him. But, you know, he was ultimately my RB3. Uh, I have Alvin Kamara and Josh Jacobs ahead of him right now. So in the interest of making my wide receiver room much greater. I, I had to get DK Metcalf, a guy that I had been trying to get off you anyway for a while. So uh, yeah, I, I was just ecstatic to get Metcalf really, because now my wide receiver room just looks so good uh, and I don't have to worry. I talked before this show, I, I had been trying to get Jalen Warren to go with Najee Harris and we, I just couldn't get it done. And I just feel weird not having backup running backs on my roster. So uh, I just, I'm just going with Metcalf and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, we talked about Kevin. I th- I want to preach this um, to everyone watching. Um, when you're in a league that has this kind of activity and also this kind of trust in terms of the league mates, I mean, we're all playing in good faith. No one here is upset about anyone, whether they like a trade offer or not. So I want to preach the importance of uh, trying three-way trades in leagues because this is a, a unique way to kind of bridge value gaps because I agree with Jason. He can tell you this. I would not give up Metcalf for Najee straight up. Our issue over the last week has been how can we bridge the gap? And Jason is just being unruly. I'm just going to say it. Because guys in the starting lineup, all the way to guys at the bottom of the bench, have the same value in his eyes. He can't add them, all this stuff. Couldn't do it. So you wanted George right Pickens on top of Najee Harris. That's just Or Jamison Williams. Well, I mean, we went down avenue what? after avenue after Matt, avenue. Matt Akilo. I was thinking about this when you were you talking said about Antonio DeAndre Jones. Hopkins. Don't just say it was Pickens. Oh, well, we went know, down well, different listen, listen, avenues. Listen, listen. I was thinking about this when when you were talking about buying Antonio Gibson. Who do you think is more delusional, me with Jamison Williams or you with Antonio Gibson? Which one oh, of us? We are we are both loony bins, straight jackets on, yelling at the corner about <laughs> Jamison Williams, Antonio Gibson. That is us. We are total nut jobs. So we are both at the max level of insanity. <laughs> and potential delusion for these players, but but I wanted I wanted to say that I wanted to bring all this up because bringing in Tyler to this trade allowed yep. me in my head and allowed me to, for my team build to bridge the gap on both ends. Now I I don't I like golf. It's not that I don't like golf, but I have him at quarterback twenty one. I think he's fairly replaceable. I do have two other quarterbacks that I'm okay starting with at this juncture. There's a chance that I could add a third. And the 108 allows me now to be at the dance. I have been trying to be at the dance, but I could not find a prom date. I finally got my prom date. It might not be the prettiest one, 
but we're at the prom. I'm in the top eight. So I'm going to have my chance to get one of the big three receivers, get one of the big three quarterbacks, or Brock Bowers. So getting inside of the dance, getting in here, you know, she might not be everyone's looker, but just like Shallow Al, a movie that I remember. I'm older. Maybe you guys don't remember this movie. But it's about seeing the beauty on the inside. And I saw the beauty on the inside of this 108, so I was okay making this trade, getting Najee Harris, who I talked about just five minutes ago, how high I am, how happy I am to acquire Najee Harris. But now what I've done, and we've all have probably done this within the last month, is you make a trade that makes you have to make both trades now. I have added too much running back depth to a team that needs other – the area is filled, so now I'm going to be on a madman mission to sell running backs now that I got somebody that I could, I truly feel happy building around. Like I said, I have an 11 uh, in my running back rankings for Dynasty. So that's it. That's a three-way trade. Jason gets DK Metcalf, his guy. Tyler gets Jared Goff, his QB, that he can start and match with Sam Laporta. And I get my man here, Najee Harris. And then, like I said, I get myself to the prom. I am in the prom. I get into the top eight of this loaded rookie class. That's it, guys. That's the show. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, talking to you guys about uh, dynasty and trades. But now, before we say goodbye, why don't we tell everybody listening, Tyler, where can everyone find you? You can find me on Twitter at PPR Tyler, on YouTube at PPR Tyler, too. We are streaming underdog drafts every single day. Today's, or I guess this is coming out after the fact, but uh, yeah, just. Come, come on, come hang out with us on Underdog. Yes. It's a fun time. It's a back and forth with the chat. It's absolutely electric. We're, we're rattling out player takes, hot takes. Uh, it's gonna start eating some hot wings on on stream too, pretty soon. So nice. you don't you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. Love that. Definitely check that out, Jason. What's going on in your neck of the woods? You've wrapped up the the rookie guide. You know mm-hmm. we're just uh, a few week a, a week and a half away. Well, at this point, about two weeks away. Two weeks. Maybe a week away. A week away. Oh, my God. We're going to be a week away at this point of the NFL draft. So what's going on? Uh, You know, just the usual, man. Got Wake and Take Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. You got my own personal Twitter, at JFootballLine. Make sure you stay tuned for that as I do have a media pass. We'll be in the media room on day one of the NFL draft. So check out my On the Boots coverage for that. Uh, And, and yeah, I mean, you know, we've got Draft Kit coming out later. We'll probably have a Rookie Guide update. All of that fun stuff, tons of stuff in the works here at Player Profiler. So just stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, follow us on socials. Great stuff going on. Like Jason said, smash that subscribe button here at the Player Profiler Network of Shows. Get those notifications on. We got so much coming out in these next couple of weeks. The NFL draft coverage is going to be absolutely bananas. I cannot wait for the draft house in Detroit, boys. Cannot wait. You can find me on X at Matty Kiwum. All my shows are out and about. The Game Plan, Trade Gods, Futurecast, Blue Chips, and The Hurdle here at the Player Profiler Network. And go ahead and like this video and leave a comment. Let us know about some of your running back buys, some of, or, or if you have something to say about our running back buys, or if you have a trade in your league that you want talked about, drop in the comments. We will get to that. He's Jason Allwine. I am Matty Kiwum. We were joined by the great Tyler Canabley, and we are the Trade Gods. We'll see you next time. From the pod father to you, I deeply appreciate you tuning in. And many ask, what can I do? What can I do to help support the host, the research they do, the production costs? Go to playerprofiler.com, Dynasty Deluxe, World Famous Draft Kit, Rankings, DFS Dominator, and of course, Data Analysis. Subscribe to any one of those, and you support all of us and take Player Profiler to the moon.